All right, praise God, here we are live on Mother's Day. I don't know what in the world is going on. Oh, okay. It's all good. I guess y'all can see me. So we'll leave it at that. And why? Here we go. That might help. All right. There we go. Praise God. First and foremost, happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful mothers out there. I know. And we were, we're going to talk about that. I know. And many times in special occasion days and what have you, uh, the Lord has led me in a different direction. So I don't always talk about mothers on Mother's Day. And I don't always talk about fathers on Father's Day. And et cetera, et cetera. But I, because I try to talk about what the Lord uh, puts in my heart to talk about. And today he was in agreement with talking about mothers. And, and so that's what I will do. And God get all the glory. Um, I don't know about some of you, but I was blessed to have one of the uh, finest mothers that one could ask for. You know, we, that's something we don't we don't get to choose uh, who mom is or who our mother is. Sometimes they are different. We'll talk about that. But um, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So let me go ahead and pray so I can get into this. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this time. You're allowing us to come together, to spend time with you, to learn what your word says, Father, to draw closer to you that you might draw closer to us. And we do give you all the praise, honor, and glory as we claim every promise in your word that it be personal. Those promises were meant to be specifically for me. And if you would repeat that, they are specifically for you. Always claim them as a personal promise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, God bless you all. I am going to talk about mothers today. Uh, and as I started to, to hint, uh, on a minute ago there are every one of us have a mother it, it's you can't come into this world without a mother even Jesus who was not born in the typical manner or not conceived in the typical manner but even Jesus had a mother and with that said not all mothers are a mom. Okay. Uh, like I said, I, w I was blessed to have one of the, the finest uh, moms that one could, could ask for. And uh, I have thanked God many times. I told her to her face more than once. So I encourage those of you that are still able to meet face to face with your mother. Tell them. Don't wait until they're in the grave to let them know how you feel. And, and I, you know, I can't, I know there are those that have had simply a mother that was never a mom. I can't change that. We're all dealt different circumstances and we must deal with those but one of the things we're, we're going to talk about today is in fact that but you know a mother first of all is one that gives birth that's the only requirement to be a mother someone had to birth you when they birthed you they became your mother but there's there's a, a more um, in-depth 
word that and his mom okay I called my mother mom and when we look at that and I'll mention here real quick you know Proverbs 31 talks about a woman and what a, a biblical woman should be I and it's commonly referred to uh, as a Proverbs 31 woman but I'm not going to go there today if you want to read that great okay if you want to try to live up to it good luck <laughs> I don't believe in luck but anyway uh, when we look at this word mom and you know the definition is more or less an informal word for mother but it means much more it's like someone you can be around without judgment mom may have some advice for you but she won't judge you she was there when you were growing up or she is there as you're growing up again mine was a mom expresses love mine did okay thank God for that uh, you know and sometimes and again this applied to my mother it was some tough love there was times when I needed some tough love you know a smack upside the head or a, a bolt across the behind or or whatever it was but I look back at the times that I was being corrected, and Mom was our disciplinarian. Uh, I think probably my sisters on here would agree 100% with that. She was the disciplinarian in, in the family. But I look back at it, and I don't recall one time, I cannot come up with one time that I didn't need it. You know, she did it purely out of love because I was going astray I was going down a path I shouldn't I did something I should not have or and probably knew better but did it anyway and there was mom with some tough love you know when I fell and skinned my knee or whatever it was passionate love and that's mom and, and I will say this now and probably again today, I honor all moms. Okay. And again, you know, this, this next one, she teaches, a mom teaches. <clears throat> I already touched on that. Okay. She taught me. I mean, yeah, Dad taught me a lot. Don't get me wrong. You know, the, the tools that I know how to use and and uh, what have you. Like I said, Dad taught me. But Mom also was a teacher. I can do the dishes and get them clean. I can sweep the floor and get it clean. You know, and, and among, those are just a couple of small examples. I can, I can iron my own shirt. I can put a crease in my own pants. Because mom ironed everything. And even even maybe maybe sometimes she didn't even realize she was teaching, which feeds into this next this next point. She was a good example. I saw her standing in that kitchen in front of that ironing board over there on the hill in Roscoe, ironing and ironing and ironing. And maybe I didn't even realize I was paying attention. But I was. I know how to lay my sleeve out on the ironing board and get a crease in it. I know how to lay my pant leg out on the ironing board and get the crease in the front and the back. I mean, that may be a little old school by today's standards, but I know how to do those things. Okay, and, and like I said, I know when I first, 
became a bachelor, uh, as my, uh, as I recall, as my first marriage fell apart, uh, and I couldn't afford to eat out all the time, I had to learn to cook. I didn't learn a lot of that as a, as a child, but guess who I called? You know, his mom, right up until I was, let's see, I guess I was 69 years old when she went home. She was still teaching. She, I, could, I was still gleaning from her years of experience. Even, even at that ripe old age, there were still things that I could learn from mom. She never ceased being a teacher. Okay. And she never ceased being a good example. You know, uh, those of you that knew her knew she had a she had a real heart for people, people that were hurting. When she saw people hurt, she hurt. And that fed into who I am today. And, you know, and moving on, Mom was very patient. She had to be with me. I don't know about those sisters. They were, if you asked them, they'd probably tell you they were perfect. But uh, whatever. <laughs> that was that was meant as a joke. Uh, but she was very patient with all of us. Even though it may not have seemed like it at times, she was still very patient. And that, that again, has fed into my adulthood. You know, in, in recent days, I've had to be extremely patient. And the other thing, another thing, was she would always listen. I went through some craziness in my life. I've been through a storm or, a storm or two. As most of you on here have. If you haven't, you have led an extremely blessed life. But mom never once turned me down to just listen. Again, she may have some advice. She may have some wisdom. But she never once turned me down to listen. And in those times, she saw me go through some very bad decisions. Getting drunk every weekend, and smoking weed, and, and, and but she still unconditionally loved me. She may not have liked what I was doing, but not, not for one single second Did she ever stop loving me? You know, she, again, no matter what I was doing, no matter what I went through, no matter what bad decision I made, she was still there with love. And, you know, she, she was and she will always be mom. And there is a difference. Anyone with fertility can be a mom, any female can be a mom. I mean a mother, I'm, I'll get it right. But a mom is something different, okay? I, I wanted to, to talk about that and I, I feel for those of you that did not have a mom like that, okay? And we'll get to that. You know, life deals, life is not always what we call fair, and we don't always get what we consider a fair shake sometimes. But at the same time, I can honestly say I believe in God Almighty that He will get us through it. And the lack of a mom may, in some way, if we allow God to intervene on our behalf would make us stronger. I, I sympathize in, in, with those that maybe can't relate, but mom does not always have to be one that birthed you. 
I'll make that point. I know many people that call someone mom that did not birth them. But praise God, they are still mom. And I, and I want to look real quick at some biblical moms. Again, I don't want to be too long today because uh, I know all of you want to get to either celebrating with your kids or maybe some of you may want to visit mom in her resting place. W whatever, I know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to be relatively short to this today that uh, that you might get on with enjoying this Mother's Day. But I wanted to look at some biblical moms. The first one being Hannah. She immediately, I, I, you know, if you don't know the story of Hannah, go back and read it. But she immediately gave her child to God. The moment he was born, she dedicated him back to God. We should all, as, as a mom, as a dad, we should immediately give our child back to God. That's when they say when a baby's christened. You know, you're you're giving the baby back to God and saying that you will raise them in a godly manner. That is totally and completely separate from baptism that is a choice that they need to make. You, I, I need to make this point. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to get off track. But you cannot make the decision of baptism for your child. They have to. You can make a decision of christening and take and dedicate them, dedicating them back to the Lord and agreeing to raise them in a godly manner. But baptism is a decision of theirs when they decide to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. <clears throat> I had to get that out there. You know, we look at Mary, the mother of Jesus completely and totally obedient to God. The reason she was even chosen to bear our Savior was because she had found favor with God. She found favor. And again, I emphasize that word found. You cannot live as you choose or live in a a sinful, disobedient life, and find favor. I look at it like kind of like a, a work relationship. Do you think you could find favor with your boss by not doing your job? It, it's kind of the same. You know, we find favor with the Lord. Again, that's a little side note. Don't want to get too far off. Uh, you know, we, we look at Deborah. She was a prophetess, and, and she served and lived for God no matter what. Again, look it up. Study these people. I'm trying to, to get through this in a timely, quick manner this morning that um, you might, again, you might be able to go on and enjoy. You know, one of the things I wanted to mention, uh, you know, my wife... Uh, was blessed with a an incredibly wonderful mom as well. Uh, I hope she doesn't watch this. I don't want to admit <laughs> now I'm joking. You know, we, we joke around a lot and, and what have you, teasing each other and what have you. But, but bottom line is she was an incredible mom. She raised three wonderful kids, who I love all three of them very much, and... But she was, in fact, a biblical mom. She took her kids to church. She told them about Jesus. And, and raised them to the best of her ability, sometimes without dad being there. And she did an incredibly wonderful job. And I respect her highly for that, among other things. But 
she was a great and is still a great mom. She demands respect, and she gets it from all three of them. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the things I wanted to talk about for those of you that may not have be able to relate to having you have a mother, but maybe you didn't have a mom as I've described. Um, I want to read one of the commandments, and it will be in Exodus 20 and 12. And it says this, Honor thy father and thy mother. Now, in other words, that doesn't say dad and mom. Or as we're focusing more on mom, as I have described mom versus mother here so far today. It does not say honor thy dad and thy mom. It says honor thy father. Okay. Honor the one whose seed you are a part of, you are a product of, and thy mother, whose womb you came out of. That thy na that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, the thing I want to point out here, there are no exceptions or no restrictions or additions to that commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother. Because when you do so, you know, some of you may in the flesh think that you have a right to hate your biological mother or feel sorry for yourself because mother was not mom. But the Word of God tells us to honor them. They birthed you. And when you do that, it's not that you were just honoring them. You were honoring God and you were opening yourself up to a promise that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You're absolutely right, Jeb. There is no if. Honor okay, your mother today. Whether she's here with you, whether you have to, to just honor her Symbolically, that she's gone on to eternity. Whatever, give honor to your mother. Not because she was a good mom. Because the word of God Almighty tells us to honor them. There is a reward with it. The only commandment that has a promise behind it. Honor is like treat with high respect, regard with great respect. And again, my notes say, even if you don't feel like it, remember this. In Colossians 3. Colossians 3, pardon me while I throw something. Oh, eyes came back open. Anyway, uh, in Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 through 25, says this, And whatsoever ye do, do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. So when you give honor, you're doing it as giving honor unto God, as you're doing it unto God, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done, and there is no respect of persons. It doesn't matter what your title is. If you do wrong, you will receive wrong. But again, the word says that do it as though doing it unto whatever you do, not just honoring your parents. Whatever you do in life, do it as doing it unto 
the Lord. Okay, there are some that would argue that Mother's Day is a man-made day. And yes, it probably is, okay? But I will tell you this, honor your mother today. But if you're seeking biblical reasons for Mother's Day, let's start with Romans 13, 7. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Now, the commandment we saw in Exodus 20 says, Honor thy father and their mother. And again, we see in Romans 13, 11, Honor to whom honor. So give honor to whom honor is due. And the Lord God in his commandments said that a mother is due honor. Not mom, a mother. Now, that said, if you have a mom that was not your biological mother, please show them honor as well today. Thank them. If your mother was your mom, thank them. Not for being a mother, but for being mom. Proverbs 3.27 says, Withhold not good from them whom it is due, when it is in thine power, or when, is, when the power of thine hand to do it. So, you have an opportunity, if you have an opportunity, to honor mom today, don't withhold it. And of course, we already read Exodus 20 and 12. There are a number of other scriptures that instruct us to honor our parents in the Bible. Again, I encourage you to study those. Go and look up this guy's simple Google search or, uh, you know, on, on your phone or tablet or whatever electronic device you use will bring up a number of scriptures telling us to honor our parents. It is biblical to honor your mother and your father. And again, that is your, your biological, the one's the two that came together to create you. The Word of God tells us to honor them. And we need to do it as though doing it unto God. Now, again, if you have someone that you can call mom in, this, in the manner in which I have described and pointed out the differences today, then you have all the more reason to celebrate and honor them. Again, I'll say this, my wife and I, and of course my sisters, were blessed with some of the, the, the finest moms that God ever put breath in. And don't think we take it for granted. There's rarely a day that goes by that I don't think about my mother, mom, and am, th and am thankful That's, that that is who the Lord chose to be my mom. And today I honor her as the Lord instructs me to do. And so when you celebrate mom today, Remember that you are in the will of God. You are exercising a commandment that God gave us to honor our parents. It doesn't say honor, 
honor your father and your mother as long as they were good and bought you your first car and gave you $100,000 when you graduated high school. It doesn't say that. It just says, honor thy father and thy mother. That's it. As, as Chip put out here a minute ago, there's no if. It's none of the commandments that I know of are followed by an if. I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying in the flesh it might be easy. Some of you weren't as blessed as I was. And I get that. I truly do. But I also get the fact that if we are going to be biblical in our actions and we're going to honor God, then we need to honor mom, mother. Today is a day. This is something that should be done every day. But today is a day to express and focus on honoring your mother. You know, Tamara is in Columbus today because her mother asked that her kids be in church with her today. She, you know, I'm not going to mention my wife's age. I, I, you know, she'll probably watch this and I don't want to get hit over the head. But she's certainly old enough to, she's been on her own. We've been married for well over 19 years. But she still honors her mother and respects her mother for who she is enough to drive to Columbus and go to church. And, 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 you know, we have our own ministry. I'm perfectly capable of handling that for a day. And she went with my blessings because I love her mother for who she is and who she raised. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> no, I'm good with it. But, you know, praise God. So, again, if you're able to honor mom today, do it. But understand that God told us to honor mother. And we should do that as well. Let's, let's close. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for your word today, Father. I thank you, Lord, most of all, for every mom that is out there that has been a good and faithful mother to those she brought into this world. I thank you for the moms that didn't give birth and yet were filled with so much love and compassion that they took on the role of mom. We honor them as well today, Father, and pray that you bless each and every one and return to them exactly what your word says and that you would be glorified and magnified, Lord. May you get all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you all. I pray that you have a blessed remainder of this day. Honor your mother today. Again, I will be back here Thursday or Tuesday evening with the last chapter in Acts to wrap up that book and rock through the scriptures. And Tamara will be back Thursday evening. Uh, and I would ask this. Pray for your pastors. We love you and you cannot do anything about it. Again, happy Mother's Day. God bless you all. We love you.